Hello learners, welcome to today's class. I'm Kezia Wanjiko. We shall be looking at uh, VAT account. And uh, in this lesson, we're going to recap what we did last and uh, we use our last illustration to be able to post in the VAT account. During the last lesson, we looked at uh, the key terms, which is input, output, uh, VAT, and how to derive the VAT that is payable or refundable for any business. We're going to flash back to the illustration that we used so that we can use that to proceed to today's class. Uh, so we had a business, XYZ, and these were the purchases for that business. So they made purchases, paid auditors and legal fees, electricity and telephone. And uh, since these transactions were exclusive of VAT, we computed VAT, which is 16% in each of the cases, of the value of the transaction. This is the amount we arrived at and the total was 382,400. Then in the same business, they did sales. So they sold in cash and credit. And again, the sales were exclusive of VAT. So we again computed the VAT and this is the amount that we received from the customers. Now, we want, at the final end, we said, to determine the VAT payable or refundable, you take what you've collected from the customers and then you deduct what you've paid to your suppliers. And we said that is because uh, VAT should be borne by the the final consumer. Uh, so the, this 784 is the total of output VAT we've collected from our customers. Then uh, 382 is the total that we've paid to our supplier. So we want to use this to be able to now post it to the VAT account. So the VAT account, it shall have Two sides, this is input tax or input VAT. This is output tax or output VAT. So we said input is the VAT that we pay to our supplier. So we will take all these transactions, all the five transactions, and then we post them to the input side. And we'll only be taking the VAT amount because remember we said the selling, the cost is what uh, our suppliers were charging. So that goes to the supplier's account. And since we're only accounting for VAT, we will only take the VAT element, just this column. So purchases uh, an amount of 320. Then audit. An amount of 32, then legal fee, an amount of 16, then electricity, an amount of 8,000, and um, telephone. an amount of 6,400. So we have pasted all our purchases under the input because this is what, these are the inputs that we need so that we are able to offer services to our customers. Then the sales, we have cash sales. So we have sales. So for the second, we have cash. The first cash sales is 160,000 VAT. The second sales are 64. They are credit. Amount of 64,000. The third time we sold cash was 320,000. We collected. Then the fourth time, sold in cash, collected to 40. 
So back to this formula. That for us to determine the VAT payable or refundable from KRA, we shall get our total, what we've uh, collected from our customers, and then we deduct what we've paid to our suppliers. Now we had already done this previously. Uh, our total input tax, we add our total input tax, 320,000 plus 32,000 plus 16,000 plus 8,000 plus 6,400. That is coming to 372,400. Uh, then our, our sales, what we've collected is 160 plus 64. 160,000 plus 64,000 plus 320,000 plus 240,000. So this is uh, 784,000. So our output is more than our input. So we take this 784,000 with less 382,000. So our VAT, that is payable or VAT payable is four oh one six hundred both sides balance at seven eighty four thousand both sides Seven eighty-four thousand. So in a VAT account, we do not have a balance carried down. A balance that carried down in a VAT account shows that you are yet to pay that VAT, and that, like all taxes, when they accrue, is a liability. And remember, if you don't pay your tax in time, there is going to be penalties, and uh, there will be interest on VAT. So. If you look at this account, you simply balance the account in the normal way that you balance in accounting. And then the balancing figure will either be VAT payable or refundable. Now, to determine that, you look at how much you've collected and how much you have paid. So if what you collected is more than what you paid, then it means you are holding money that belongs to the commissioner. So you paid. If what you've collected... Uh, output is less than what you have paid um, input, then it means the commissioner owes you because we had said earlier that the incidence of VAT does not lie with the business, it lies with the final consumer. Now with that, we are going to look at other aspects of the VAT account. So we we'll look at it more comprehensively and uh, we will start by looking at uh, drawing the account or having a draft or a format of the account. So we just take it the way it is on that side. So we said it must be for a business. So let's say our business is XYZ Limited. We are preparing VAT account. Tax period is uh, monthly, so January 2017. This must appear. So we have our two sides, input VAT or input tax and output tax. The most important or the two key issues in VAT is the supplies or the sales and the purchases. So we will have sales on this side because we are collecting from the customers. And like, um, like this shows, this account here, uh, uh, this is where we had made a transaction, made cash sales amounting to 1 million exclusive of, one, of VAT. So we collected... 1.16 we credited ourselves and we credited the VAT. So this VAT account here, 160,000, this is what you're putting on this side.
So we have cells. VAT element. We'll put crosses to show that. Uh, and then we'll have purchases on this side. Now, these cells can be split. So let's just split our cells into its, their own components. So you'll have cells. Local. Local cells will attract VAT. Exports, we said earlier, they are zero rated. We split the same for the purchases. Local. And imported. We'll also attract tax. Now, sometimes we find that uh, you realize that within a tax period, you had underdeclared or overdeclared the taxes for the previous period. Or you find that you had done a stock tick and you need to account for that. So if you had closing stock for the last period, which forms the opening stock for this period, you're going to put it on the input side. The reason is, so here we have opening inventory. The reason is that these are the goods that you will sell and collect uh, output VAT, whether you're going to sell them locally or you're going to export them. So either way, because there is an attributable output VAT, you will need to claim the input VAT. Uh, then the other major things that affect sales and purchases is when we issue debit notes and credit notes. So uh, when we issue a debit note, a debit note means that we had under invoiced our customers. We are issuing, we are the business. So when the business issues a debit note, a debit note denotes that the invoice that had been issued previously was understated. Therefore, to correct that understatement in the prices, the business will either issue an invoice, an additional invoice, or the business will issue a debit note. So most businesses will issue debit notes. So debit notes issued means now we our sales have increased. So we have here debit notes issued. Then if we receive debit notes received on that side, Meaning that also our suppliers had understated our prices and therefore they will give us a debit note to correct our prices. Then the other one is a credit note. Now a credit note is issued by a business when the supplier or when the business realizes that they had over tax, over, not over tax, they had over invoiced or they had overcharged for a supply or when goods are returned. So if you flash back to business, when a business returns goods, when we have returns outwards, we've returned goods to our suppliers. Our suppliers are supposed to acknowledge that we returned goods to them and to give us proof of the returns that we've made. So the proof that is given by the supplier is the credit note. So credit notes, received so that it can reduce our purchases then we can also issue credit notes when the business issues the credit notes it means on the debts that it is owed that debt has gone down because like we're saying one reason is that customers have returned goods so when customers bought from us we claimed or we collected output VAT. So when the goods are returned to us, we must reduce this amount. So credit notes issued are on the input side. Now sometimes you may have uh, a business that is over declared. So if we had declared our VAT for the previous period, which is the previous month, then that declaration, over declaration, gets to the input side. 
so that it can reduce the amount that you're paying over. So anything you have on this side, output, means any transaction here increases the amount that we are going to pay to the commissioner because it indicates that for some reason we are collecting money from our customers and you're collecting on behalf of the commissioner. Then anything we have on this side, any transaction here, means it is reducing the money that we are going to pay over to the commissioner because it represents what we had paid. And we are to collect, deduct what we had paid so that we can remit to the, to the commissioner. So these are some of the things that we will have in the VAT account. Now, when you have op opening inventory, you may also have closing inventory. So in accounting, closing inventory reduces is the balance of the purchases that you had made for the period that you do not get to sell. So as a result of that, the um, in closing inventory will reduce your purchases. So we get it on this side. So here you have closing inventory. And then now we can balance the account. Said so balance. If your balancing figure If your balancing figure is on the credit side here. It means that you have paid more than what you have received. Therefore, you receive the balance from the commissioner. So this is VAT refundable. So if it is on this side of the debit side, it means that you have collected more than what you paid. Therefore, you pay over the balance to the commissioner. So VAT payable. So that is it for the VAT account. Mm -hmm.